Hey guys, it's Brie. Um, I have read The Curse of Chalion by Lois McMaster Bujold, and this has been a really interesting read. Um, <laughs> so I, I figured we could talk about it. Um, the story follows this guy named Kazaril, who at the very start of the story is kind of stumbling on this road. He's like beaten up and half starved and homeless. And he is trying to make his way to the castle of this Provencara, uh, who's kind of, she's like a basically nobility. Um, she had been, she, he had been a page in her home when he was young. Um, and he's, he's hoping that he can get some sort of employment in her, in her house. Um, then of course we learn about all these terrible things that, that have happened to him. Um, basically he was in a war and was enslaved following the war. And now that he's back, he basically wants nothing to do with like the main center of nobility like the capital of the state. He doesn't ever want to see it again. Um, some bad stuff had happened to him related to it. And he just wants to live out his life in peace and quiet. Of course, this doesn't happen. <laughs> um, Kazaril very quickly becomes the secretary and tutor to young Isel, who is, she's called the Royess. Um, and basically what that means is that she's princess. She's way down in the line of inheritance. There's nothing that's really like going to ever cause her to be part of the throne um, or to be heir. But her brother, her half-brother, calls her uh, to court. And of course, Kazarul has to go with her. And once he gets there, he uncovers all sorts of mystical, magical things. Um, <laughs> there's a mysterious garden gardener, animal caretaker, um, of course, a curse upon one of the houses, uh, gods and magic and all sorts of good stuff, and of course, court intrigue and people who just want to kill Kazarel. Um, <laughs> and I, I really liked this story. For one thing, Bujold draws you in from the very get-go. It's like six pages in and you're like, gosh, Kazaril, I'm on your side. <laughs> and normally it takes me a while to warm up to a character, um, but I was rooting from him from very, very early on. Um, <laughs> on top of that, her characters, as, as the story goes on, aren't just like emotionally gripping, but they build and they, they develop personality and they grow throughout the story. So I really liked seeing that, especially in Isel, who is the young, basically princess. Um, she starts off at the very beginning of the story being kind of this flouncy, you know, very well-intentioned, but not particularly self-critical young woman. She kind of takes everything at face value. And between the guidance of Kazaril and kind of the experiences that she later has at court, she becomes just so very competent. Um, and in a way that it's not, it's not an A to B transition, right? It's not like an overnight thing. It's very gradual throughout the story and you see her grow and it's, it's very satisfying to see that because it's, it's incremental. Um, <laughs> Kazaril, bless his heart, um, he definitely becomes more confident and he has to take on a lot that he would not otherwise have taken on. Um, he has a lot that's kind of thrust upon his shoulders about midway through the book and watching him deal with it and try to balance the relationships from his past with his obligations to the future. You just, you can see the internal war that he's having. And I thought that that was a really satisfying aspect of what Bujold was doing with the story. Um, the plot itself is like really, really interesting, um, just packed with court drama and intrigue and like all sorts of backstabby plots. Um, <laughs> like if you, if you like kind of nuanced, intriguing stories where there are complex interpersonal relationships that really actually affect the plot, that aren't just kind of window dressing, um, this definitely has that going for it. And it has some fantastic battle scenes and like magic scenes. Um, 
it's just very well executed as far as the plot construction and pacing and all of that good stuff. <laughs> the world is, it's, you know, it's a default medieval Europe style world, basically. Um, and the interesting part comes in when the gods kind of come into play. Um, there are a number of gods who people kind of just accept um, it was a little strange because they just kind of accepted that the gods would like send omens and things, right? The only person who's really like a little skeptical about that is Kazaril. But everyone else is like, oh yeah, that bird definitely just jumped down out of that tree at that moment. Obviously it's a sign from the gods. Um, and everyone accepts it, accepts it except for Kazaril who's like, sometimes birds just jump out of trees. Are we really sure this is a sign from the god? And if, if it is... Like, maybe we should be worried that the gods are, like, concerned with our lives. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it's interesting, and the more you learn about the magic system and the way that the gods are kind of working in the story, the broader um, political aspects of the story, so the country that they're in and how that's relating to other countries and how that impacts Kazaril's story, um, is all very, very interesting. I really enjoyed reading it. Um, I, <laughs> I think it's a fantastic book to pick up. I will be picking up the, another book, I think, that's set in the same universe, which is Paladin of Souls, and I've heard that that is just as good. Um, so yeah, and also, <laughs> I bought this book used, and when I got home and I went to actually read it, I found out it was signed. I felt like I had made a major score. <laughs> um, but there you have it. That is Curse of Chalion uh, by Lois McMaster Bujold. I think it's a fantastic read. If you have read it, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought. Um, I hope you're having a fantastic reading week. I'll talk to you later. Bye.